Welcome back everybody. It's mitten day. Time to learn how to knit a pair of mittens. Super simple mitten pattern can be found on Louise Patterson's Ravelry shop and the link to that pattern will be found in the drop down box below. I'm going to be using the same yarn today that I used for my super simple hat so that I have a matched pair and I'm quite excited about that. So as you can see I have gone ahead and started with my cast on as directed on one of the DPNs of the set. There is a, if you need a refresher on the long tail cast on, there is a video found earlier in this series and I have created a separate playlist for the knitting videos and you can find those on my channel under the playlist category. So I have cast on all of my stitches, remembering to add one extra stitch to the cast on count so that I have that extra stitch available um, for when I join in the round. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add in, I'm going to divide these stitches up onto four needles as directed. So I'm going to start with an empty needle and I'm going to start not on the edge that has the working yarn but on the other end. And I'm going to divide up those stitches into the numbers as directed by Louise. Now I've gone ahead and made my cast on edge a little bit looser. I tried to be a little bit looser than I normally would be because I like to have a little bit of give when I'm doing my cast on and joining in the round because knitting on DPNs in the round, the first couple of rounds, it's a little bit awkward and I like it to not be too, too tight. It, it makes it just a little bit easier for me. So now I've added my first needle. I'm going to go ahead and add this I guess it's the second needle. I'm going to go ahead and add my third needle and what I do is I go in between the first two needles that I already have here and I continue taking the stitches from the original needle that had the cast on edge. I suspect there's going to be a lot of noise from the needles today as they hit my table as I do this cast on edge. So I will try to talk over top of the sound of those noisy needles. All right, I have my third needle is in. I'm ready to add my fourth needle. So again, I'm going to be coming in between the needle that I just added and the original needle to take those last divided up stitches that I need. Oops. There we go. Okay. So, as you can see, I have my stitches now divided up onto four needles and they look a little bit tenuous. So, the next thing that we must do before we join in the round is make sure that all of our stitches are facing the inside. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn this around so that it's ready for me to join in the round. I have my working yarn on the needle that is in my left hand and I'm going to bring those stitches from the right hand needle that's at the end and the left hand needle that has the working yarn attached together towards each other and I'm going to check very very carefully before I join in the round that all of the stitches all of the cast on edge that I can see I'm going to be really careful to check that it's all facing the inside that all of those bumps from the cast on edge are facing the inside of my circle so that I'm absolutely certain that when I join in the round I will not have any twisted stitches because if that happens, you'll have to rip it out and do it over again. We can't have a twisted stitch because you will not be able to knit a circle. Okay, so joining in the round with DPNs is exactly the same as joining in the round with a circular needle. It's just a little bit more awkward because, you know, we have these floppy needles all over the place. So what I do, you take the fourth needle and you're going to pick up the stitch on the 
left hand needle, so needle number one that has the working yarn and you're going to transfer it over to the needle that's in your right hand. And now the working yarn is at the last stitch, it's at the end of the needle that's in my right hand. And then I am going to cast off the second to last stitch up and over top of that stitch that has the working yarn. Up and over and off like so. And that's it. I'm joined in the round. That is it. Okay, so I am now joined in the round and I can go ahead and I can carry on with the pattern as needed with my fifth needle. So Louise's pattern calls for a two by two rib, so knit two, purl two, and it is exactly the same on our DPNs as it would be using a circular needle. I, because you've got this extra needle tip in the way, I like to bring my left hand needle tip underneath it so that it's out of the way. Here's my extra needle. I slide it in where I need to start knitting to go around. Make sure that I have my working yarn and not my tail that I'm going to be knitting with. And I'm going to knit, there's that. This is my working needle. This is the fourth extra needle. And here's the needle that's holding the stitches that I'm about to knit off of. So I simply knit and I keep it nice and tight. Knit, two, Oops. Pearl two. And as you can see, you just have to put up with the other needles just kind of flopping around in your hands. It feels a little bit funny until you've done it a hundred times and then it feels quite natural. But you know, those are quite a few needles in your hands. You've got five needles in your hands, but really you're only working with two. The other three are just hanging around, waiting their turn. Knit two, purl two. I'm gonna end with my purl two here. And then I am at the end of needle number one and I'm ready for needle number two. So now I have an empty needle. I'm gonna pick up the next needle that I need to keep going in the round. I've got my yarn to the back because my next two stitches need to be knit stitches because the ones I just did were two purl stitches. So bring the needle that I need to the back of the extra needle push those stitches a little bit to the middle so that they're not close to the edge so they won't fall off. I need my working needle and I've got the stitches that I'm about to knit into. Working yarn wrapped and here I go. Now the first stitch of a new needle needs to be nice and snug so that you don't have little holes in your work. Now remember, now I'm still just using two needles. The other three needles are just hanging out. There we go. That needle's done. Bring to the back, slide the stitches for the needle that I need, the next one. Working needle. Bring that needle tip round to the back. Third needle, there. So you can see the first few rows are a little bit tenuous. 
and until you really know what you're looking for, what, you know, you just feel it and you practice and practice and practice. Practice and practice and practice. And eventually, you'll get used to that sort of loose feeling that those needles have at the very beginning. And it won't concern you because you'll know that in a few rounds, it sorts itself out. You'll have a lovely little circle going and it won't feel quite so um, loose and floppy in your hand. Okay, that's three needles complete. I'm gonna have my last needle to do here. Get my tail out of the way there so it doesn't get mixed in with my knitting. Stitches to the end, needle to the back, working needle tip inserted. Oop, make sure you bring your yarn to the back because my next stitches are knit stitches, not purl stitches. Oop, there we go. Okay, so knit two. Nice and snug up to the old needle that I'm headed away from for that first stitch. Make it nice and nice and snug. Purl two. Knit two. Ending with two purl stitches. And I have just completed my first round of ribbing on DPNs. So as you can see, I still don't have much there, but I'm definitely in the circle. I'm definitely in the round. I've got all of my cast on stitches are in the middle. So I know that I have a circle and you just keep going around and around and around in the rib pattern. So when you're doing a rib pattern, you are knitting into the knit stitches and purling into the purl stitches. And you just follow the, follow the directions for the amount of ribbing that is required for the mitten, as long or as short as you want it. If you would like a longer cuff, make your ribbing longer. If you would like a shorter cuff, make it shorter. The next video will be um, talking about the thumb gusset. So I'm going to probably have a week in between videos. So that gives you a full week to practice joining in the round on DPNs and knitting your ribbing on DPNs. Any questions, please feel free to leave them below this video. I think we're gonna have a lot of fun learning how to make mittens and I'm really looking forward to seeing yours. Have a great day and I'll see you in a week.